What's up everyone? The Live Action Titan show is currently four episodes in, so I thought it would be fun to do a History Of episode on two of the show's characters, Hawk and Dove. Unless you're a big DC fan, you probably don't know much about them besides what you've seen in Titans and their brief appearances they've made over the years in animation. So without further ado, let's learn about some Hawk and Dove. Hawk and Dove first appeared in Showcase issue 75 in June of 1968. They were created by Steve Ditko and Steve Skeets. Ditko and Skeets based the concept of Hawk and Dove around the political divides in the 1960s and used the terms Warhawks, people who favor war, and War Doves, people who believe in peace and rather talk things out, as the basis for these characters, hence the names Hawk and Dove. The duo originally consisted of brothers Hank and Don Hall, but later changed to the more current version of Hank Hall and Don Granger which is of course the versions we see on Titans. I also want to note the female Dawn does spell her name different. She spells it D-A-W-N instead of D-O-N like the original Dove, which I guess was to help differ the two even more because I guess the anatomical differences wasn't enough. In any case, let's see how the duo got their powers. Hawk and Dove's origin is given to us in the same issue they made their first appearance, Showcase Issue 75. The issue introduces us to brothers Hank and Don Hall. From the first page, we see the two are very different. They're both protesting about war outside of a school. Keep in mind, this issue came out in the 60s during the Vietnam War. Hank is protesting to keep the war going with signs saying, keep up the bombing, might is right, no let up. While Don is protesting with his peers for peace and compromise, saying stop the bombing, we should compromise and do anything that will make peace. Essentially, over the course of the issue, we see that Hank is a conservative and Don is a liberal. So ideology-wise, one leans more to the left and the other leans to the right. Because of this, the two of them are constantly arguing as Hank thinks his brother is a massive wuss, while Don thinks his brother is an overbearing hothead. What's kind of ironic about this is their father, Erwin Hall, is a judge and because of this is way more balanced and follows the law by the book. He tried to teach his boys to be like this and tell them most problems can be solved with logic but needless to say, he was unsuccessful. Now, because their father was a judge, he made a lot of enemies, as judges are responsible for putting people in jail. So one day, some unhappy criminals threw a grenade in their father's office while Hank and Don were in there. But their father shielded them, telling them to get behind the desk, and took the brunt of the blast. Their father survived, but shortly after the attack, Hank sees the man that threw the bomb in their dad's office. So of course, they follow him into the building he's going into. But they accidentally get locked in a room and then hear the criminals talking about how they're gonna kill their father once and for all but they can't get out of the room to save their dad, no matter how hard they try to break down the door. So Don says, if only we had some sort of super strength or power, at which point a mysterious voice comes out of nowhere saying, power, you wish for power, then so be it. This of course freaks them out as they're like, where the heck is that voice coming from? But the voice then says, who or where I am is not for you to know, you have been chosen. I have heard your wish and it shall be granted. You both shall have powers, if this is what you seek, what powers do you wish? Hank replies, I want the power to break out of here. The power to stop those creeps who are after dad. The power to smash them, tear them apart so they'll never commit crimes again. Can you give me this? The voice says, yes, it shall be yours. And then asks Don, but you, is this also what you seek? Don replies, no, not quite. I want to save father, not smash criminals. Let the police handle them. Hank is like, you idiot, that's the kind of stupid thinking I'd expect from you. But the voice says, silence both of you. We seem to have here a hawk and dove. So be it. Let the transformation begin. And boom, just like that, the two were transformed into Hawk and Dove, which gave them superpowers whenever anyone was in danger. Hank was transformed into Hawk, and Don was transformed into Dove. Now with their superpowers, they quickly go to stop the criminals who are about to kill their father. But even though they saved him, their dad wasn't thankful for his vigilante protectors. So Hank and Don continued their crime fighting career in secret as Hawk and Dove. Now you guys may be wondering, what about the female Dove? How did that come to be? Well, I'm gonna talk about that in story arcs. After saving their father, Hawk and Dove made names for themselves by becoming vigilante heroes. And even though Hank kept his fearsome aggressive attitude as Hawk, the public still saw that he was doing good for the city along with Dove. This inevitably led to them joining the Teen Titans for a brief time, which is why they're on the Titan show. But shortly after, they were put on the Teen Titans reserve list and didn't go on missions much with them in order to give more of their time protecting their home turf. Throughout the late 60s, 70s, and early 80s, Hawk and Dove would continue to fight alongside the Teen Titans, but also on their own. They even had a short-lived solo series titled The Hawk and Dove, but it only lasted six issues. In any case, everything changed dramatically for Hawk and Dove in 1986 during the Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline, particularly in issue 12. And that's because Dove was one of the last characters killed off during the event, joining the likes of Kara Zor-El, Supergirl, and Barry Allen Flash, 
amongst more. So this is what happened. In Crisis on Infinite Earths, Anti-Monitor has started a crusade across time and space to bring an end to all of existence, which has inevitably led to DC continuity being rebooted, giving many heroes new origins. But in the midst of all this, of course there is chaos everywhere. This causes the now retired Hawk and Dove to come out of retirement to help save people in the streets. So they start saving a bunch of kids as shadow demons are attacking. But when Dove sees a kid trapped in a building, he says, hold on Hank, there's a kid over there trapped. And Hawk says, Dove, we can't save everyone while fighting that enemy. To which Dove says, we've got to try. We too have always fought our wars differently. You with your fists, me with my heart, and nothing's changed after all these years. So Dove goes to save the child, but as he's doing so, Hawk yells, Don, my god, behind you, Don. But it's too late, and Dove is killed by a shadow demon. Now this was devastating for Hank, but was also problematic for their superhero personas, as the reason they were made Hawk and Dove was because Hank was the super violent one, while Dove was the peaceful one, which in turn would force them to meet somewhere in the middle and give them balance in their crime fighting. Without Dove to balance out Hawk, he had less control over his aggressive chaotic tendencies and was soon kicked off from the Teen Titans reserves and also blacklisted in 12 countries, which is crazy. And this is where the female dove finally comes into play. Basically, we learn the mysterious voice that gave Hank and Don their powers gave the powers of Dove to someone else. And that would be Don Granger. She was gifted her powers in the same manner as Hank and Don. She was in London on business with her mother, but at some point her mother was captured and held hostage by a terrorist. So as Don was helpless with nothing she could do to save her mom, a mysterious voice offered her a chance to make order from this chaos. All she had to do was say the word. So of course she did, and boom, she became the new Dove. After this, she tracked down Hawk and even helped him in a fight and was like, hey, we should be teammates. At first, he wasn't about it and was hostile with her. Like, even full on attacking her, being like, who are you and why the heck are you impersonating my dead brother? But she was eventually able to explain to him her origin and how she became Dove, which I just told you guys. So he soon accepted her as the new Dove and his partner, seeing her not as someone trying to replace his brother, but someone who could carry on his work and legacy. Now, you know how I kept saying that mysterious voice gave them their powers? Well, that's because that's all we really knew up until this point in time in the comics. But it's revealed this mysterious voice and the source of their powers is the Lords of Chaos and Order. That's right, these two opposing forces of mystical energy empowered Hawk and Dove to act in their stead. Pretty crazy stuff, right? If you don't know anything about the Lords of Order and Chaos, the Lords of Order are actually tied to the Helmet of Naboo, aka Dr. Fate. They're basically supernatural, mystical beings. So as you probably caught on by now, Hawk and Dove from the Titan show are nothing like how they are in the comic books. I personally think the comic versions are way cooler being avatars of peace and war, but in the Titan show, they're just normal vigilantes with no superpowers. Which is fine and all, but I personally like the comic version and backstory way better. Anyway, after fighting crime with the new Dove, Hank started growing more furious and violent. And as time went on, this eventually led to him becoming the future supervillain Monarch. Yes, Hank from the future became an evil dictator of Earth in the post-apocalyptic Armageddon 2001 story. He then comes back to the present time and captures Hawk and Dove, beating the crap out of Dove, which pushes Hank over the edge and he beats Monarch to death. But then realizes that Monarch is actually an older version of himself, which drives him insane. So he puts on his future self's armor and becomes Monarch yet again. But it doesn't stop there. Stealing the chronal energies of Wave Rider, Monarch became Extent, a time-warping villain, who tried to kill all heroes and manipulate time to further his own goals. Extent even defeats the entire Justice Society and killed the original Hour Man and Adam. But he's eventually killed when Atom Smasher and the JSA put him inside of a plane that's about to crash, which kills him. Kind of a weird way to kill a villain that powerful, but hey, what are you gonna do? After this, Holly Granger, Dove's sister, becomes the new Hawk. But then during Blackest Night, a Black Lantern Hawk slash Hank Hall killed Holly by ripping her freaking heart out. And by the end of Blackest Night, Hank is brought back to life by the White Lantern Light. Hank would go on to join the Birds of Prey along with Dove. After this, Hawk and Dove appeared in their own DC New 52 title, but the title honestly wasn't very good and it got canceled after only eight issues. And that, my friends, brings us to powers and abilities. With powers granted to them by the Lords of Order and Chaos, Hawk and Dove's natural abilities are enhanced dramatically when transformed into Hawk and Dove. They transform by saying their name similar to how Shazam transforms. In any case, since Hank already has traits of strength, intelligence, agility, and endurance, his transformation puts all those on a superhuman level. He also has a pretty decent healing factor and is a great brawl fighter. His power set is pretty straightforward. He's a super strong brute who likes to fight and is all about violence. As for Dove, both versions are all about compassion, but I'm mainly gonna stick to the female Dove because quite frankly, I like her more. She's incredibly smart, has enhanced strength and the ability to fly and even sense danger. Before getting her powers, she was always a good judge of character. 
but with her power, that works on a superhuman level now. She even said gestures of people reveal thousands of clues about a person. In seconds, she knows how everyone in the room is gonna act and react. Because of this, she knows precisely where to strike to most effectively trip up her attacker. She can even sense where a gun is gonna be pointed and feel when it's about to be fired. Everything for her is a sharp focus and she absorbs every single detail around her. What I'm saying is, she's extremely hard to defeat. Their power sets are pretty basic in comparison to other heroes, yet really, really cool. With that said, let's move on to some Hawk and Dove reading recommendations. Read Showcase Issue 75, the Hawk and Dove series, their 1988 title, Crisis on Infinite Earths, their 1989 Hawk and Dove solo series, and Teen Titans Issue 21. I think that's enough to get you guys started. First up for Wednesday, November 7th, we have Batman issue 58. In this issue, the Dark Knight waddles into a turf war with the Penguin. Now we have Spider-Geddon issue 3. One superior Spider-Man is willing to do whatever it takes to defeat the Inheritors. Will Miles Morales and his team have to stop him before he goes too far? Here we have the Immortal Hulk issue 8. Bruce Banner is dead. His corpse has been dissected, his organs cataloged, and his inner workings are being studied by the scientists of Shadowbase. So that just leaves the Immortal Hulk. Now we have Justice League issue 11, Drowned Earth part two. The Justice League is scattered across the seven seas, pursued by the Ocean Lords and their army of alien mercenaries, and constantly at the risk of turning into monsters. And finally, we have the Green Lantern issue one. Putting it simple, this is a new ongoing series written by superstar comic book writer Grant Morrison. That's right, he's returned to DC Comics and is taking on the Emerald Knight, Hal Jordan. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but remember to check out our website, VariantComics.com, as well as all our social media. Links for that is in the description. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.